Hey everyone, I'm Neil Melanson from uh, Extreme Couture, and we're obviously not at Extreme Couture right now. We're in a little garage that I'm going to be showing some techniques to help you guys out with uh, your, some of your guard work and setting up some of the uh, trapping systems, mainly the uh, Irish Collar. Uh, I got Marshall Carper with me. He's uh, the writer for my uh, first book coming out with Victory Belt called uh, Mastering the Triangle. And the techniques I'm going to show you today actually are going to come out of that book. And that's going to be out hopefully in a month or two. If not, I'm going to explode. It is available now for pre-order on Amazon. So go ahead and reserve your copy now. That's good. Okay, so before I get into the actual technique and um, the guard system itself, I want to give you a reason why I'm doing this. Um, that way, I want you guys to understand, I want to create more work for myself unless I have to. So if I can control the guy's wrist and I can control the guy just with grips, I'm probably not going to go through all the theatrics of trying to trap him and doing all this stuff. So to kind of get into that, I'll throw myself in the guard here. And when I'm playing off my back, I kind of I want to be able to move as fast as I can. So I got to have as little friction on the mat as possible. If he sees my head on the mat in an MMA fight, he's going to swing away because I'm going to telegraph pretty much everything by picking my head up plus my chins up. So I kind of want to be in that saucer back position where I'm kind of quick and I'm hard to tie down and I can protect myself and move kind of quickly and just a better fighting position, protect my chin and everything else. Alright, so this is kind of where I want to look, looking to go for. Alright, now when I'm in this position, I want to grab something a little more tangible to try to submit this guy. If I, I, if I just have double wrist here, if this, you know, all technique works some of the time. If he's not playing me right and he's just kind of hovering, not controlling my hips, and, not, and, and just making a lot of mistakes, this is, this is going to work the fastest. I don't have to do a whole lot of timing and I keep him from controlling me. But the reality is it's kind of, that's not how the way the game is really played. So a lot of guys either tend to do one or two things. They tend to play far away, in which case you're out of reach. So when you throw something up, you end up getting passed. Or they come in and smother. And when they smother you, they kind of control your hips. And you got to fight for inches. And then as soon as you get something trying to set up, that's when they duck out and then they leave and then they're throwing punches and it's just kind of this awkward game. And so usually what I love to try to do is catch him in the middle. So if I had his head and his wrist and he just tried to the posture, there's no sense for me right now trying to trap him or work another advanced system. I would just kind of just time, just time him because he's, he's not controlling me and he's not too far away. But if he's playing me kind of smart, I'm going to try to usually trap first before I play an open guard. Just on the fact that if I'm a guard player, which I am, he can always have the right to just not fight me. If I do open guard first, he could just get up and leave, and he's going to force me to a stand-up, which is not what I want to do. So I'm going to look to try to trap him, and I'm just going to trap his upper body one way or another. Now personally, I'll, I'm always looking to try to get a lot of times shoulder pins and these tight, nice height guards that high guards that have good cross faces and they can make my opponent hover. But controlling somebody's arms is not the easiest thing in the world. And he doesn't have to be a big guy to be self-strong. I mean, I'm, I, I'm definitely bigger than Marshall and even though I'm bigger, it doesn't mean I could control him. If he's got good discipline and he knows how to stall and he's just really holding himself tight, the, trying to get a hand trap is going to be a pain, and he's being just defense, but he's going to shut me down. Okay, and before I try to open my guard or do something, I need to try to get something where I can get a little more time to play with. So I'm not going to be in a hurry to open my guard here. Now, the reason why I'm going to show you the Irish Collar today is because it's a good setup for the, all the other trapping systems. Okay, and plus I was told that we had a few requests, people asking about it. The Irish Collar is just in, like an advanced headlock, okay. It just kind of looks like this, all right? I got his head locked up with my bicep on the inside and my skull to skull. Okay, this is just like a setup position to the real basic guard approach, all right? And the reason why I'm going to hunt this first is because like we talked about controlling the arms. These, these arms are like two live snakes and I'm going to try to wrangle, okay? His head is still target. So if his head is not moving, but his arms are, I don't want to waste too much time trying to fight these moving targets that are fighting me back. Because in, in an MMA sense, every time I miss, he's going to tag me and then I'm just constantly getting work done on me. I'm constantly getting damaged. So I'm going to go for the still target, which is his head. Okay? 
Now, the advantage we have with the close guard is I can try to hack them forward a little bit, and I want to try to get my shoulder as low as possible. I want to get, basically, I'm going to shoot to get under his chin, and I probably won't get that most of the time. But that's kind of where my target is. I want to get my shoulder under his chin. So, either I'll be trying to keep my hands inside the best I can, because in, in an MMA sense, I kind of want to be on the inside most of the time. And I'm going to use my legs to swing him forward. Now, his arm might not go to the mat. Ideally, it will go there from the pressure. If it doesn't, no big deal. We can still fight there. It's not a problem. Okay? So I'm going to use my legs, and I'm going to swing him forward. And I'm going to try to get my shoulder in his chest. So I swing myself, swing him forward and throw myself forward. So I, I would love for him to stack me right now. That's exactly what I want. Because at least now when I get here, I get a hold of his head. And now he's not going to be punching me. This arm over here, behind me, is not doing a damn thing. It's not going to hit me in the head. He's got to punch through his own skull. And now I actually have a nice bicep ride with my forearm, and I can start to extend that when I need to to protect my head, which allows me to some advantages to duck under and also get my knee inside. Okay? When I'm in this position, I'm going to keep myself curled tight. I want to stay balled up. All right? And the reason for that is, even if he's back on his knees, go back on your knees here. As you can see, he feels like he's high in my guard. Okay, he feels like he's almost got me stacked. The reality is he's really low on my guard. He just doesn't know that. He didn't move, I moved. If I tried to set this up right now, first of all, his head's too low, and it's got, I'm not going to have any pressure on his head to create the setup for these techniques. And he knows how low he is, which is going to cause a little alarm to go off in his head. So, I want him forward, nice and high, locking hold of his neck. And you can just do the basic, like, kind of gable grip here. Okay? And I'm nice and tight. Now, from here, I can start to use my legs to kind of squeeze him back on his, on his heels. And I can start to hip out and get my foot on his hip and curl on his back should I want to work the open guard. Because at least I can keep him from leaving right now. Alright? And this is optional. I don't always go to this. Sometimes I work it right from the close guard. Okay? So, I'm throwing myself forward. I'm pulling him forward, and I'm trying to lock control the still target, which is his head. So like I said, if we're hand fighting here, I'm trying to trap, trying to drag, trying to force his hand to the mat. He's being very defensive. He's playing smart. It's not what I'm doing wrong. It's what he's doing right. So what's not moving? The head. The other thing would be the leg. But we're not going to use the leg. I'm going to go for the head. So I use my legs. I hack him forward, and I slam myself into him. Now I lock, and I get a hold of his, his neck. If he's got a little pressure on me and I don't want it, I can always just use my legs to squeeze him low and sit up with him. Don't let him slide. I sit up with him, or if I want, I can start to utilize the grapevine to break his posture for me. And you can see I'm already in the fight. I'm ready to go. Okay? Either way, I cannot let myself slide, because right now, there's not a lot of pressure on the neck. He's going to slip it and beat it. Okay? So, locking in, I'm staying tight. Now, what we're going to do is start getting into a little defense position here. I'm going to do basically a bicep ride. And from here, I'll be able to attain wrist control and then bounce off that. Okay? So I'm in this position. I slap him forward and I lock. Okay? When I'm in this position, I'm always going to try to pretend like I have a neck lock, even though I don't have a neck lock. Unless his shoulder, his chin is really high up on my shoulder, then I can probably crack his neck a little bit. But I wanted him to, to think I have something. So I'm going to be a total asshole here. I'm going to dig the blade of my, of my hand and thumb into his neck. And I'm going to twist it like a key. Just to hear, I can hear, his, hear this bone raking up his vertebrae. And that's going to be my distraction. He's going to have to, he's going to feel some pain. He feels like something's going on. And he's going to stop trying to control me as much and try to pay attention to his neck. Which is going down the path I want him to go down. Okay, so I got his neck nice and tight. I'm kind of, I'm just kind of being a prick. I'm just kind of grinding on it. Okay, now I got my elbow on the inside. What I'm going to do to help get uh, wrist control is I'm going to use my legs now. So ideally, I'd have a foot on the hip. If not, it's no big deal. I just got to stay tight with my legs. I'm going to push with my elbow and get my knee on the inside. And this is what I'm looking for, just a bicep ride. Now from this position, I'll hug his neck and grab his tricep and then slide down to a wrist control. So it's almost like you would be doing like a spider guard kind of situation. I said I'm working a lot better of a head control than just 
my collar tie. From this position, I can just do basic techniques. All right, because his reaction is a lot of times going to be to try to back out or to posture, and when he does that, he's going to let me free a little bit. Okay, so only thing I have to be worried about him is the stack in his position, since right now he's kind of small. I don't really have good foot on hip position to stop that. Okay, so I'm just nice and tight. So once again, it's just kind of here, knee inside, tricep first, slide to rest, and keep that evil neck control. All right. Now, what I like to do from this position is start to set up a behind the back rip. So I go here, and now what I'm going to do is come over, and I'm going to dig that same blade into his armpit. And as I dig this into his armpit, I'm going to pull him towards me. I want him to smother me. I want him to stack me. All right. When he stacks me, I feel him. If he tries to duck out, I'm moving backwards and out. That is what I'm trying to stop. That's what I'm afraid of. Even posturing, I'm not worried about that so much. That duck yow is going to create a whip, and he's going to knock my teeth out when he comes back forward. Okay? If he wants to stack and control me, that's fine, because he's touching, and I'm touching him. I know where he's at, and I can work him. I'm safe. I'm not going to get punched, and I can off-balance him. I'm just in a better position. Okay? All right, go back down. All right, so here, dig this bone, and start to grind it into his armpit, and then I'm going to start to hip out as much as I can to stay close to that shoulder. From here, I'm going to funnel my hand through and then lock a one-on-one, -on -one, okay, over the back rib. Now, I didn't trade the wrist control yet, okay? I got both hands on it at this point. I'm still skull to skull, and I'm still trying to hug him tight and close to me, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is make good use of this, and I'm going to start to get into a chain of attacks. As soon as I get here, I'm going to pull his arm away from his body and I'm going to drop my leg. So I'll be here, pull it away, drop, and now I'm going to kick with one arm. I'm just going to let go of this arm. And I'm going to pull him, pull his arm into his armpit. I, a lot of people have a tendency to push this low. And when I do that, all I'm going to do is straight, let him, him to straighten his arm and pummel out of this. All right, so screw that. All right, I'm going to get him and I'm going to hike him up. I'll deal with him stacking me later. But now, I got him nice and tight, I'm flexed, he's naked on this side, that arm's not bothering me right now, and I'm in the fight. This is the last place he wants to be. It's very good control. You just gotta get good at attaining this wrist. You're not gonna be, doing any, be able to do too many magical things as far as just come up and fold it. They happen sometimes. But if he's a good defensive hand fighter, you'll never gonna, it's, you're asking way too much of yourself. So instead, you just, Get the first good control position, snap him forward, crank on him, let him know you're there, get your elbow inside, get down to that wrist, push with that shin, dig your forearm under his armpit, lock and hug him tight to your leg. Now he can move any direction he wants, I still got him close to me, he can't posture, he can't go anywhere, even if he stacks I feel fine. Okay, see I'm still, I'm still in the fight. From here, pull it away, pull it tight and pull it up. From this position, our next step will be based on our feet. If I can get this foot, if I have this foot on the hip, I, uh, this is all the grip I need. Okay? If I have a grapevine, I can do the same thing basically. Alright? So I get this foot on his hip. Staying tight. Don't pull yourself flat. This is going to be your mistake. Okay? Stay tight. Keep that foot taut on his hip. If you have to push on his knee, push on his knee, or push on his shoulder. And then from here, I'm going to bring my leg right over and keep my hand here for just a quick second. Now from this position, I can re-grab and peel it off. That's only if he's controlling my glove. Otherwise, I'm never going to take the time to do that. Instead, I'm going to immediately start to hunt his leg, and my left hand is going to transfer for head control and finish the triangle. All right, so I'll go from here. Boom. Or sometimes I have to put it on the shoulder to give myself a little more defense against this forward motion. All right, so here it comes right over, right away. I come under this leg, lock, and then curl, and I finish the triangle, keeping the leg and keeping the head, kind of cradling them up, pinching my knee against my shin, flexing my feet up, and then flexing my leg. All right, 
this is going to be a lot harder for him to escape. My hand's going to be stuck on the other side, not the top of his head. The side, and then finish. All right, so we kind of used just basically a good neck lock kind of headlock control. Like basically, it's, it's, just, it's just a tight version of a collar tie. In the old days, the guys used to do this. They get your head up here, and they lock a figure four around your neck, and then they squeeze you low with their guard, or they get grapevines. And then when they get the grapes, they bust you out, and they snap your, they'll snap your neck a little bit there. It sucks. Reality is, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that unless I really can get his chin high. And from there, I might not have anywhere to go. All right? So instead of doing essentially the same thing, like this, see how his neck's folded and creating pressure, but now I'm using this to actually win the hand fight and start to get in the fight in general. Okay? So... Once again, forward, lock, squeeze tight. Then you get on the inside, tricep to the wrist. Remember, always keeping pressure on his head. Now, sit forward, dig. Dig this into his, don't expect to just touch it. You're gonna have to grind forward and lock it. Now from here, both arms pull it away. Hug it in tight. Make sure I have that foot on the hip. And now I can just bring it right over. And then I'm hooking right away. And finish. Okay, so this is a head-on version. Locking tight, squeezing. Gonna keep that saucer back nice and tight. As I get here, I make hip out, knee inside, underneath, both together. Once that foot's on the hip. I can now just let go, come over, hook, and I'm on. Now, if I can't get that foot on the hip, this is where my fear of the stack is going to come into play. He's got, my opponent's got three directions inside my guard that he can go to beat my technique. The answer might be the stack, the posture, or the duck out. So forward, up, and back. Depending on what kind of control I have, if I have a collar tie, if he postures, he's in a terrible position. I mean, if he's got a real powerful collar tie, so yeah, he can break my grip. But if I slow him down just enough, he picks his head up, he really tries to posture, try to posture. Right now, I'm already, I'm already on him because he hovered. But if he ducked and moved backwards, you see, he didn't posture out of that. He shucked it. All right, he just ducked. That's what's going to beat that. Okay, so let's say if I have an overhook, Okay. If he tries to posture, yeah, he, he could probably get out of it. It depends. But if he tries to move backwards, see, that's what the overhook stops. It stops the duck out. So if I have an overhook, say I'm here, and he starts moving backwards towards my legs, he's going towards the choke. He's going towards the triangle, you know? But if he stacks and puts that shoulder in my face, he made this overhook pretty useless. And now he's going to get ready to pummel, and then this is going to be an elbow or punch when he breaks through. All right, so that's important to remember some of these directions and what guard system to use based on how he's playing. Now, I'm going to use the same technique, the same setup that you just learned, but he's going to play a stacking position. He's going to come forward. So i got to keep him from coming forward. And I'm going to do is implement a cross face, and that's going to, make, it's going to create him to hover. So now he can't move backward, forward, or back, uh, up. He can't do any one of those three directions. I can stall him in the middle for a small amount of time so I can hit the submission and finish him. Okay? Like so. In the same position, I lock him out tight. Now when I'm here, he's going to start playing in, which is fine by me. He's playing in. I get my knee on the inside, and I lock. Can you, am I still in frame? Okay. Here I am, keeping him tight. Now, come underneath, curl, and I lock, and I got him hugged tight. Now, I know he can't posture. If he tries to sit back and posture, go ahead. If he tries to move backwards and duck out, he can't, but he can try to stack. See, now he's got me kind of trapped up. No worries, I'm, I'm still in the fight. I'm gonna beat this grip a little bit, pull it away, and hug it tight. And see how I'm using a nice closed guard here? Reality here, I'm going to be a prick. 
I'm going to squeeze on his ribs and bridge my hips and try to pull him too. I'm going to pull his butt towards that wall and pull this arm towards the camera. I'm going to pull up and push away. And this hand right here is going to go under his throat and I'm going to cup my own bicep. I'm going to take my elbow and I'm going to spike it into his shin. See how his back kind of rounded? Right now, he, he's not hugging me whatsoever. My hips are free. Okay? If he tries to move backward, he can't. He tries to posture, he can't. If he tries to stack, ah, he can't get in. That cross face is working. So now, all I have to do is throw my legs up. Boop. Now, I'm going to immediately go to the same thing. From here, arm out, under the leg, head, and then finish. Let's take a little angle here. So here, boom, I'm trying to work. Snap them forward, lock, protect my head always. From here, trying to win this hand fight. Get my knee inside, trap, stay mean, lean forward, dig, and lock. Now I'm ready to get in the fight immediately. Pull it across, come to his body and start to squeeze. Bring this arm across, lock. Now, he can still go belly belly on me, he can start to stall me. That's why I want to push my elbow. Just because I'm here, I can stop his head from trying to touch mine. But he can try to drive his chest flat on my stomach. Okay? And see, I, now I'm going to be kind of stuffed. But that's why I just push with my elbow into his ribs or his chest plate. You see how he can't do that if he wants to. And now I just throw my legs up, out, pivot, and there she is. Okay. So this is just kind of me in triangle oriented. But there's a lot more things we can do from this setup. Now, what I'd like to show you is when I get the Irish collar, we have to be really honest about ourselves. That's the number one thing you guys do to your technique. You have to be as honest as possible. Okay, you have to little, have a little voice in the back of your head that said, okay, yeah, that's great, but try getting on that, like trying to make that work against a champion or somebody that you admire or somebody that in the gym that even that kicks your ass every day. And that's your gaze, that's your reality. Okay? Now, the Irish call is easy to get in, in a grappling match as far as guard goes. And from there, it's pretty easy for me to set up shoulder pin series or rubber guard or whatever I want to use from that trap if I don't use the Irish call at all. So to me, that's like my son. It's like the center of my trapping systems that I can kind of float, but it, I want to focus on getting a hold of that skull and getting that Irish collar first. Now, getting on the inside with that bicep ride and getting my knee inside to get down to that wrist is great. If I can get a hold of his wrist, that's a great thing if I can take away one of his weapons. But you're going against a good fighter that is so vicious with their hand, hand fighting that every time you break grip, to try to get a hold of his wrist, he's re-pummeling, he's ripping out, and it's when a guy is sweating, like someone like Randy Couture sweats, like, he's like it's like you're raining Randy sweat all over you, and the guy is so slippery, just naturally, that if you give that guy just a little bit of an inch, he, he, he's like, he, he just crowns out of everything, okay? So trying to break grip to even get a hold of a wrist here, to me, might be too dangerous, all right? So depending on my opponent, I'm not going to break grip now. I'm just going to hit a triangle with my hands locked. And I'm going to start to utilize pain and pressure and my forearm to pinch his arm against his body. Okay. So what's going to happen here, I do the same setup and I got him locked tight. Got my hands locked together because I don't want to let him go. Because either I don't think I'm going to get that wrist or he's just being so aggressive. For me, usually this is the first go-to move I do when I'm using the Irish collar, and then the secondary is what I already showed you, where I'll actually try to get to the wrist. The least amount of steps, the best. So, for right now, I'm gonna try to get beat his arm without using my hands. So I'm gonna stay tight with him, okay? Now, what I'm gonna to start to do is I'm gonna to start to crush on his neck as hard as humanly possible. I'm going to start to pull on his neck 
really, and I'm going to try to, I'm basically going to kind of make him think that it's my first day of grappling and all I know what to do is to try to pull this guy's head off. Okay, so I got him nice and tight and I'm going to squeeze with my legs and squeeze him low and I'm going to pull down into the blade of his neck and I'm going to pull back. Now here's the trick. I'm going to move, see my elbow's flush against his shoulder? I'm going to move my elbow away from his arm, his body, and come back like this. And what I'm going to do by doing that is giving him an outlet to get rid of the neck pressure. And I'm going to use that prediction against him. What he's naturally going to want to do is go to a bicep ride to push the pressure off his neck and, and, and protect himself. And from here, I'm going to turn it against him and push and get myself a triangle. So how it looks is I'll be nice and tight, squeezing, and like I said, I want to think about submitting him. And I see how I create that space? As soon as I feel that hand pummel, remember, see that I have tension in my legs, I'm pushing him low. As soon as he pummels in, I go push my elbow and trap it. Now I'll push my hands against his shoulder away and pop my hips up. So I push and up, over and done. I have to try to hurt his neck. In other words, once you do this a few times to your training partners, they're going to know exactly what you're doing and they're not going to pummel. So hurt their neck and they'll, they'll pummel just to get the pressure off their head. Okay, you might even tap some people out, but I've never really hurt anybody's neck badly as hard as I would squeeze from the Irish collar. So don't really expect it to be a submission, just kind of more pain. Okay, so one more time. Here, snap them up, lock, and I start to use my legs, use my bone in my arm here, and I start to use my skull and crush. And see, I bring my arm, elbow away. As soon as he pummels, elbow hits, push with your hands, and I'm going to push him away and pop up. Push away, pop, hook, and finish. Okay? Now, in accordance with this, people that know, you know, like I said, will figure you out. As hard as you squeeze, they might not do put the hand on the bicep to get the pressure off. So we're going to do something similar to our first technique. Now we're going to pummel and get our knee inside. Okay? And then when he goes to re-pummel, so he puts his hand on my bicep, I can drop and pin it. And this is going to carry over to all, anytime you work a uh, bicep variety, whether you have an overhook or a shoulder pin or something, you can, these, these techniques are available if you want to do them. Okay? So same thing. I snap them forward, lock, and I'm squeezing, trying to be a prick, using my legs, trying to get that foot on the hip, but Marsh is a whole nother whole other story. He's a couple weight classes smaller than me. I'm not that flexible. I can't get it up there comfortably. So I'm going to stay here and now I'm going to push on that bicep with my elbow and now I'm going to get my knee inside. And you see how I'm hugging my own knee? I'm not, I still got a lot of tension on him, but I'm now I'm going to start to move this away and bring my knee up. All he's going to do now is the pummel. He's going to bring it through. I pin it, pinch it, push over the top and finish. Okay? So it's almost like you were pummeling him to force his hand to the mat. Say if you even like we're in rubber guard and you kind of swim it through. Kind of do that same concept. So if I bring my knee inside and then he goes to pummel and I just tag it. It's a quick little technique. Okay? Yeah, it's good. So boom, lock. So now I'm kind of making him do something. And I'm crushing on his neck the whole time. So, to kind of wrap it all up, when I'm on my back, I get a side. If I want to trap this guy, I want to do it as fast as I can. I can always switch trap to trap, but I have to get the traps going. If his arms are alive, it might be hard for me to assume I can get an overhook right now. And this, Sometimes it's way too easy to beat. So I need a staging point. Some people that's rubber guards, some people use that as a staging point. Okay? I like to use this. Okay, so use my legs, snap them forward, get a hold of that head, and I'm gonna start crushing on his skull. And from here, I'm either gonna do one or two things. I'm either gonna try to go for that shoulder, uh, 
form pinch triangle right away, or I'm going to try to get wrist control. Now for me, less work is the forearm pinch. Less steps, I'm all about doing less work. Okay, so when I'm here, I'm crushing on him. He, oh, I'm going to reset, I didn't really pull on you yet. So I come here, I start to use those legs, push him away, he pummels, pinch, up, and then get out of the way and rotate. If he's just not falling for it, I'll do something with it. Push, knee inside, grab the wrist, dig, pull, and now if I have the foot on the hip, over the top, if I can't, come across, push in the hover, up, and finish. Now, whatever you fancy, like in uh, the triangle book here, you know, that's coming out here in a month or so, you see me dance from all these different trapping systems, and I try to lay it in order to how my opponent's fighting me, not necessarily how I would choose to do things. So that's going to be in my uh, advanced guard system books coming out next. But when you're trying to work control of your opponent, try to pay attention to what the problem is. If you're trying to, every time you break him down, you're having problems trapping him because all you're looking for is over and under hooks and he's hand fighting the crap out of you, you're going to have to need a staging point to get there. And the head is the hardest thing to protect in grappling or in ground fighting in general. Right? It's very hard to protect because we don't fight on the ground like this. We always fight out here. Okay? So attack the still target. So snap him forward, lock a hold of his neck. And when you have a hold of him, you gotta let you let him know you're there. You gotta crush on him. Okay? And pay attention when you're in this position to his three directions. How is he playing you? Is he trying to just duck out? Is he just trying to posture? Or is he trying to stack forward? And then one of those three directions, his his control, his motion is gonna tee you off to what techniques probably gonna work better for you at this time. And you're gonna have to move on because of that. From this position, like I said, for me first, I'm just going to do little steps. I'm going to crush on his neck, give him some space, give him some room to take the pressure off, pummel, and then I'm just going to pin it and, and hit the forearm pinch triangle. If I can't make that happen, or I think I'd rather have wrist control because I'm constantly worried about him ducking out and I think the forearm pinch might be, it might be uh, too much movement and not enough I need more time, I need more control, then I'll fight to that wrist control by using my knee inside, grab that wrist, and I personally like to go to the over the back grip, um, which kind of have, I call around the gym, but Boston handshake. I reach through and you grab that one-on-one. -on -one. And then from here, if you can get if your foot on the hip to stop that stack, you can just bring your leg right over. If you can't, you've got to create a hover, you've got to create a cross space. Bring it across, just grab anywhere on your arm here. The lower the better, and then use that elbow into his, his chest to make him hover, keep him from moving forward, and you kind of stall that all three directions temporarily while you just clear the arm. So that's kind of, that's kind of, it's a little a bit of an intro into the, the, the Irish collar and, and how I, I choose to use it, but there's a lot more techniques here and you're going to learn about that. And uh, like I said, definitely you'll get my triangle book. If you don't like me, but you like Marshall, he needs this money to eat because he's poor, he's a poor writer. So if you don't want to put money in my pocket, don't think of it that way. Think of that, you're putting money in his pocket. So that way you can still be happy and still buy our book. But I really think everybody's going to love it. The book is humongous and it took about two and a half years worth of work. So if it's not good, then I'm a Chinese jet pilot. So anyhow, thanks. I'm glad you guys, uh, hopefully you guys like this. Give me some feedback. And if you have questions, you can get a hold of me or him, or just keep it to yourself. Thanks. <laughs>